normal? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Sure. So just a, a little bit more than finding yourself on the witness stand talking about some very I'm Allie Jackson Jolly. I'm here with Chris Melcher. He is a divorce attorney and a legal commentator. Chris, welcome and thanks for being here with us. Well, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, we've got a we've got a really meaty topic to cover today, and that is the Fannie Willis ethics case. I was hoping that you could tell us what you think we should know about this case. Well, this raises a lot of issues. I mean, it's there's this personal relationship that she has with Nathan Wade, the special prosecutor that she appointed. She's obviously leading one of the most significant cases in the country and then finding herself on the witness stand talking about some very personal details. And obviously there's questions about whether this is an appropriate examination of whether she's acted ethically or whether she's just being penalized for having brought this case. Yeah, and so the thing I wanted to ask you was, you know, wait, Nathan Wade, um, his action in filing for divorce when he did, um, do you think that timing is suspicious? Is this something that is normal like what are your thoughts on that sure so just a, a little bit more on background nathan wade was married um but then said he was separated from his wife he actually said his wife had an affair and so they were living separately and according to to nathan wade and fanny willis is that uh, nathan got the special prosecutor job from fanny willis um, and then there was a relationship that developed between the two of them thereafter. Now, at some point later on, um, I mean, in terms of when Nathan broke up with his wife, uh, there was much later on that he actually proceeded or they proceeded with that divorce case. And one inference is, is that uh, they weren't really separated, uh, Nathan and his wife, for that long, and they're, they're making that up and that, um, basically that this relationship was an affair with, with Fannie Willis against his wife. So that's one kind of accusation that's been made. But I, I really don't see the evidence of that coming out. And it's common for people to separate and then take quite a long time to move forward with their divorce because there, it's one. It's a very difficult thing to tackle for folks, and they don't want to deal with it. And second of all, sometimes they figure maybe there'll be reconciliation. So those cases do naturally take time. So I don't see anything suspicious about the fact that they separated and then uh, Nathan Wade proceeded with the case uh, much later. Okay, and then another piece of intrigue or interest for many it has to do with the way that Nathan Wade was paid. You know, we know from watching this um, develop on, on, you know, in real time that um, Fannie Willis has been um, allegedly paid Nathan in cash um, for, you know, a lot of different um, services and those he couldn't even trace some of them and yet other things like rent were paid using cash apps so can you help me understand as a as a divorce attorney like is this more normal than the average person who hasn't gone through a divorce may you know may understand or does this seem unusual to you well, sure. I mean, wh when there's a divorce case going on, we are looking at the spending to see what's happening. Like, you know, does it match their income or are they having an affair or any of this stuff? So there's always this examination. But here in this case, we're really interested in whether the compensation that Nathan Wade is receiving from um, Fulton County to act as a special prosecutor appointed by Fannie Willis uh, is being funneled back 
to Fannie Willis. So again, just for background, in case folks don't know all of the history, is that Fulton County's prosecuting this case against former uh, President Donald Trump and a bunch of other people. And, you know, look, these prosecution offices aren't big enough, so sometimes they have to hire outside counsel or for other reasons they'll do that. So Nathan Wade was selected and being paid hourly to do this and has made upwards of $700,000 doing that hourly work. Now, so the question becomes, since they now have admitted to having a personal or intimate relationship, whether um, Fannie Willis is benefiting financially from that arrangement. She's the one who appointed him. She's the one who supervised him. Is there money coming through the back door? Now, she has definitely placed herself in a place where she has to be questioned on this. And um, they were taking trips to various places. They were going to dinner and events. And what Fannie Willis has testified and Wade, uh, Nathan Wade, is that you know, look, it was all equal. No one paid for the, each other. We balanced it out in cash. So if we did something, there were some cash payments. And some of these were some cruises. So there would have been some fairly large cash payments. And or one person paid for something and the other person paid for something else. And it all kind of balanced out. And that probably is true. The problem, though, is, is that they don't have records of it because she did it in cash. She explained that her father always advised that she carry cash and that's just her way of doing things so i would suspect she doesn't use cash apps that's just not her thing she actually has cash like you know none of us do but she's got cash she uses it that's the way she runs her life which is totally fine but the problem is is that she is in a position in a high profile um, prosecution probably one of the biggest cases in the u.s going on right now she's a public servant she is having an intimate relationship with a subordinate in the workplace and she obviously would be called to question on these things and but she didn't keep a record and just as a side note like what you know in california we'll we'll have judges sitting judges sometimes attend a dinner event and i've always seen them take the the server aside and saying i need a separate check and get that separate check and use a credit card and pay for it because they don't want an appearance that anyone in that group the attorneys paid for their meal that's that's kind of comes back in my mind and why didn't fanny willis think of that and saying even though she likes to pay in cash to have a paper trail so if this was came up they could say look i paid for my own cruise but now it looks just weird because it's all in cash yeah, so thank you for talking about, you know, question, questionable ethics, you know, some questionable stuff that's happening. This does feel like this has been a talking point pretty early on. And some would say that Fannie Willis, of all things, lost the court of public opinion early in. Do you think that's accurate or do you think that regardless if this was, you know, anyone, whether a black woman, a a white woman, a white man, we would have be seeing the same sort of um, heightened um, concern and disdain even for these kind of actions. Well, I've given this a, a lot of thought, and I think there's several dimensions to this. One is this is a highly polarized case. So anyone on the, let's say, Trump and the uh, co-defendant side of things um, are, are going to see this as completely wrong and no matter what the explanation is and um, you know and of course she has has had a lot of threats and stuff that this has been a very difficult experience for her and um, so now it's just going to be even more intense unfortunately for her now the supporters on pro prosecution side are going to see this as being you know completely wrong it's not about her it's about the defendants and I don't think any of those opinions are going to change. Now, where I've been looking at it, though, from a completely different perspective, one is as an employer. And I know as an employer, we get training. And as a supervisor, you have to avoid intimate relationships in the workplace because that could lead to sexual harassment. Now, here, this is completely consensual relationship, but she was still his supervisor. She appointed him and I assume had the power to fire him. And now entering into an intimate relationship with him while that you know case is going on 
is bad judgment. It, it is, I, I don't know if it violates specific policy of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, but this is bad judgment in the sense of a supervisor having an intimate relationship with a subordinate. That's just is something we should not be doing. Secondly, she is a prosecutor and yes, uh, you know, I mean, this is a powerful role. It's political and it's also quasi judicial that you think about the power and how scary this is to be prosecuted. If any of us suffered that fate, maybe we did something wrong, maybe we didn't do something wrong. And now we have the power of the state of Georgia coming down on us and trying to put us in prison and it would be devastating. So that power has to be uh, used appropriately with a concern for justice and making sure there's no improper purpose or even the appearance of improper purpose. So for her to have a uh, intimate relationship with Wade, who she appointed and is supervising and is not directly paying, but making, you know, but because of her act, he is being paid and not to keep records of that and to pay him in cash to, you know, reimburse for the things that they did together. Again, poor judgment. The going on trips and, you know, on cruises and public events while they were having this private relationship and thinking that no one would find out about it also, you know, it's just questionable to me. So again, I, I think at the end of the day, uh, the legal analysis will be that this does not disqualify her from prosecuting. It's a bad look. I think it's really poor judgment on her part. She's been taken to task for it. My sense is, is that Judge McAfee will will say these very things to her, that this was really inappropriate, but there's no evidence of a quid pro quo, meaning that there's no evidence that that Nathan Wade is taking money and giving it to her in the back door uh, kind of way of, of profiting off of this prosecution. I don't think that they've established that, um, but this is damaging to her. I think when we look at it more from that legal, practical employment standpoint, this is bad judgment. And it has to me nothing to do with race or gender. It's just people in power have to act responsibly. Yeah, and so I heard you say a few times the the harm of improper appearance when you are in court, when you are prosecuting someone. So based on all of this, what do you think are the chances that Willis will stay on this case? Well, it's going to be up to Judge McAfee. He has the power to remove a prosecutor. And Again, that, that is a severe remedy and would have to be done in the event that, you know, the defendant can just simply not get a fair trial without the removal of that prosecution team. And now part of this does look at the appearance of impropriety. So the fact that um, Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade may have done absolutely nothing wrong, but if there's an appearance there that a reasonable person would entertain doubt that um, these defendants cannot get a fair trial, the judge may be required to remove. My sense is, is that um, she's not going to be removed. And if that happens, the prosecution will go forward. If, if Nathan Wade is removed and Fannie Willis is removed, I got to think that case is over to get somebody else in there from the state um, or a new prosecution team involved at this stage. I, I think that would be the end of the case, practically speaking. Yeah, and so we're almost out of time, but I have one more question I want to ask, and that is, do you see any long-term ramifications from this case in, in how, um, you know, ethics and court ethics will be handled moving forward? Do you think that um, when this is over, re regardless of how it goes, it'll be like many things out of sight, out of mind, or do you think that... Um, we're going to continue to feel the reverberations of this case in courts to come. Well, I, I think it will have an effect because of this special counsel relationship. I, I, I think it would be different if Fannie Willis and another DA in her office, meaning another employee of Fulton County, had an intimate relationship. It would still raise those same concerns about a workplace relationship. But when you add in the dimension of Nathan Wade is being paid by the hour, $700,000 about to date, 
um, you know, we do have to look at this that um, somebody has a financial incentive to prosecute and for the case to move on, whereas a public employee, a regular prosecutor, gets paid a salary. They don't get paid any differently whether they bring cases, dismiss cases, or get convictions. And so I think that, to me, is the conversation that has to be had, is that is, do defendants get justice when the prosecutor is being paid by the hour to prosecute them? And then if certainly with relationships like this, which, you know, human nature, things are going to happen. Um, but that just really puts a stain, I think, on this whole special prosecutor uh, relationship. And that, to me, is the conversation that has to be had going forward. Yeah, well, it is fascinating stuff. And I really appreciate you being here with us, helping us make sense of this become a little smarter about what's going on um, and look forward to keeping this conversation going. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Today, and that is the Fannie Willis ethics case. I was hoping Hi, I'm Allie Jackson Giles. Against his wife, so that's one kind of accusation that's been made. But I, I, she's just being penalized for having brought this case. Yeah. And, and one inference is is that uh, they weren't really separated 